What's up, comic and pop culture fans? It's Minty the Clown, here to talk to you about some of my biggest fails of the year. And it's not even over yet. And because I never seem to learn from my mistakes, let's get into my top 10 fails of 2024. So far. So far. Drop down below what is a book that you've lost a lot of money on. 2024 is actually pretty crazy. There's a lot of instances where I either just broke even, lost a decent amount of money, and in these situations, lost a lot of money. It's proving to be a very difficult year to stay in the green, and these 10 things seem to be really keeping me down. Let's get into number one, X-Men 101, first appearance of the Phoenix. For some reason, I bought this raw copy from someone I have bought comics from 10, 15 times before. He had like a 9.4, maybe even 9.6 looking raw first Phoenix. He had it for 1,200 bucks. I asked if he could do it for 1,000. He said yes, I took it home with me, so excited, and then I found out that 9.4 graded copies sell for $1,000. Oh, I put it up in the antique shop and I made a post saying, hey, if anyone wants this for the exact price, I bought it. But no one wanted to play that much of a risk, and I understand. Since no one wanted to pay a 9.4 CGC price, I did send it off to CGC. It is currently with them right now. But considering that I need a 9.6 just to recoup my money, makes me think this is going to be an unlikely one right here. I'm more than ready for it to get the 9.4 and to lose a couple hundred bucks, but if it gets a 9.2 or a 9.0, I'm several hundreds of dollars in the hole. Next up is Strange Tales 169. This was actually from the Fantast Collection. Came with a cert of authenticity and everything. I bought the first appearance of Brother Voodoo. It was going to be a personal collection copy, but I got greedy. And it was a 9-6 with white pagers. And they told me over the phone that a lot of the books they wanted to regrade because they actually thought that they could get grade bumps. I looked at the book. I also thought it could get a grade bump. Tossed another $200 into the book for a deep clean. Got it redone. And it came back the same grade. So I'm $2,200 into this book. And unfortunately, it sold on eBay for $1,850 just last month. So after eBay fees, it actually is $1,571.29. If you're counting the math, that is a $578. $78.71 loss. Almost a $600 hit because I went for the big risk and didn't pay off. Next up is my least favorite on the list. Number three, Archie's Girls, Betty and Veronica 320. This is the first appearance of Cheryl Blossom. I bought this and granted using my eBay rewards on the eBay credit card, but still I could have used it for something else. For $668.23 in November 9th of last year. This thing was advertised as mint. Remember that that's going to be important. Just to solidify the fact of how sharp it was, I even had it sent to my presser, who then we had it sent to CGC after that for the Dan Parent signing because I wanted to get a Cheryl Blossom sketch and remark on the book. My hopes were it was going to get like a 9698 and have a sketch of Cheryl Blossom. The book not only was not mint, it got an 8.0, but it had color touch. Ooh. $668.23 for the book, $22 for my presser, $165 to go to CGC for the Dan Parent sketch, came to $855.23. I sold it this year at an auction for $166. That means this was a $688.28 loss. That's a $700 kick in the pants. Oh my God, and this seller was the Biggest f***ing asshole ever. Dude, I reached out to this guy. I was like, hey, I just wanted to let you know you advertised this as mint. It got an 8.0 and had color touch. And this guy, oh, I might not be able to talk about this, actually. Probably one of the biggest assholes I've ever met on eBay. And I've been buying on eBay for two decades. Needless to say, I wasn't compensated at all. I kind of wasn't expecting him to, but I was hoping for some sympathy. I did not get it. <sighs> this is a bad one. Fantastic Four 53 from the Don Maggie Thompson pedigree. Here's all the things that make this book great. It's signed by Stan Lee. 
White Pages, 9.4, second appearance of Black Panther, first appearance of Claw, first appearance of T'Chaka, first appearance of Vibranium. Seemed like an amazing book at the time. I bought it for 2,500 bucks. It was an old label. I knew that if it could get a 9.6, I'd be looking at a nice return. And I thought it could get it. I put about $300 into a deep, full, clean, and perfect pressing. And the book actually did look improved came back the same grade. So unfortunately, I'm $2,800 into this book. I still have it. I put it up on eBay. No one seems to care about it. It has no watchers. It has almost no views. No one seems interested at all. And it looks like this was a bad investment. Probably should have just left it alone because no one's showing any interest. I think I may have to go down even further, maybe all the way to 2000 for this thing, which would mean an $800 loss. I think you're noticing a trend and that is this seems to be the year of big risks are not working out. Guys, right now, if you take any advice from this video, don't risk it. If you're gonna do any risking, play it with the five, 10, $15 books. Don't do big risks with big books. Every time I'm either getting the same grade or you'll see grade dips. Fantastic Four Unlimited. Let's keep talking about Black Panther for a second. Marvel dropped a video game featuring Black Panther as a main character, and it wasn't T'Chaka, and it wasn't T'Challa. It was Chanda, the OG Black Panther, which first appeared in Fantastic Four Unlimited number one. Me, with my speculating ass, I jumped to eBay, and I bought up 200 copies of this thing. I searched for only mint copies. I honestly should have made a video about this. Guys, of the 200, I think about 30 to 40 of them were actually mint. But the problem is me and the wife unboxed everything and rebagged and boarded. We couldn't tell which ones came from where, so I couldn't dispute anything. And I was stuck with about 160 to 170 of these things. I put them at the antique shop for just $3 a piece. And apparently one of the days when I wasn't working, Someone came in, I got the phone call, offered him 20% on top, and he ended up taking them all. I was hoping for a bunch of 9.8s of this thing, because after all, the direct editions are 100, and the new Cs were about 150. I got four directs that got the 9.8, and four newsies that got the 9.8. If you're counting, this all equates to about a $720 dollar loss. All because I got specky and greedy. Don't let it happen to you. We're not in that market anymore, guys. Big risks are not paying off. Next up is <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 210. First appearance of Madam Web. You could probably see what's happening here. I bought a newsstand 9.8 for $1,500. This is when it was a $2,000 book. My dumb ass decided to just keep it in the antique shop instead of putting it on eBay. When the book was in its peak, I didn't put it online. So that book came crashing down. It is actually a third of what the fair market value was from just one year ago. Yeah. Yes, the last sale was $680. So if you're doing the math, that means once it sells, it's about an $800 kick in the pants. This is not the market to be doing big risks. Also, the book's hot. Sell it, man. Don't hold it. Next is one ill-fated trade. I traded a 9.4 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, second printing. Sounds like a really expensive book. You bet. And I actually had later a bunch of people interested in. Kind of wish they messaged me first because I actually traded it to a friend who I've done some trades with. And I, of course, love this person. But I got a crap deal. <laughs> I got a bunch of ratio, like 1 in 200, 1 in 300, and 1 in 500 variants. On paper, it looked like I was coming out on top. But now it's been months later and not a single one of those books has sold. So I gave a TMNT 9.4 for a bunch of 1 in 500 variants. I don't even know why I did it. It's really strange because I'm not that type of guy. And very clearly, my clientele doesn't seem to care about 1 in 500 variants. So as of right now, I have netted, I think, $0 from that trade. This could be 
a $3,000 loss. <coughs> oh God. Next up, I just made a TikTok about this one, Conan 23. First appearance of Red Sonia. This was going to be a grail. Okay, so this was a 9.8 with white pages. There were no 9.8 signed copies that existed. Me seeing red and seeing green, I was like, oh my God, I'm totally sending this book in because it used to be the case that as long as you pressed press, the book stayed the same grade after it got signed. But this year is the year of the grade dips. Holy crap, I've seen my fair share of them. And unfortunately, my 9.8 Red Sonia dropped to a 9.6. If you don't know, that's a financial basketball to the head. By the time this video drops, we'll be on a Monday. I actually did a dollar starting auction on this because I was just so frustrated with it. And we'll see how it sells, but considering it's on eBay, the book would have to sell for $3,000 in order for after fees and shipping for me to make just my money back. I don't think that's gonna happen. This could be a $500 loss, $1,000 loss, more than that. We'll see. To be fair, if it was gonna be a signed yellow label and keep the 9.8, I wasn't gonna sell it. So it was gonna be a loss either way. This just hurts so much more. Second to last is the first collection of 2024 that I bought. I was really eager to start the new year running. So I got a lead on a collection and I actually paid a helper to come with me. We drove an hour away and saw a collection. It was like 12 short boxes, something like that. And it was probably what we would consider junk. It was all new books, but it wasn't even Marvel or DC. It was like independent titles. But what got me is the fact that there were metal covers in there. There were like one in 100 variants and other sorts of things, or even a couple signed books. Once again, I completely forgot that my clientele only likes the antique stuff. They don't like anything brand new. Only about $200 of that stuff actually sold. And every time I've tried to bring that stuff to my claim sales, it stops it dead in its tracks. So clearly that stuff is a claim sale killer. And I actually had to just bulk it out. I offered him $1,800. I really only made like two, maybe 300 bucks. That was, if you include gas and the amount I paid my helper, a 15 or a $1,600 waste of time. Whoa. I learned very quickly that most comic book shops actually only pay $20 a short box for junk. I was giving him well over $100. Definitely should not have done for that particular collection. And I got slapped with it in the end. The last massive investment that has left me on my rear is the birth of my son. I love him more than anything. He gives me life. But I think that medical bill was twenty-seven or $28,000. I can't remember correctly. So if you don't know, babies are really expensive in the U.S. Definitely wasn't prepared for how much of a kick in the pants it would be. Luckily, he's the best thing that I've ever done. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Guys, you got to have some fun with it. And you know what? This is definitely a buyer's market right now. Sellers, hang in there. If you were lucky you were selling in 2020, right now we're in the pits. It will get better. You just got to be smart. And God dang, avoid the huge risks. Don't send 9.8 slab books to get signed. You might get a grade dip. Don't hold on to really hot books. They're going to go down. Don't trade massive easy selling keys for modern one in 50 variant crap. Heed my warning. Otherwise you may be a Minty the Clown yourself. See you at the next video. Don't f up like I did.